Hi, hello, this is Jules the Human here, and welcome to the Jules and Matt Anime Hour. I'm one of your hosts, Jules the Human, and every week we go out into the world and watch a little bit of anime, and then we come back here and talk about it. And today is the first time that we're going to be talking about the anime Erased. It was suggested by somebody in the Discord, who we will not name any names, but they've been <laughs> suggesting a lot of anime for us. And the way you can get an anime on this list for us to possibly watch in the future is by donating a $5 Super Chat on YouTube. Or 500 bits on Twitch, wherever you're watching this, uh, you submit some monies and you can add a anime to the chest. And we have a whole lot more to go and to watch and to talk about. It gets rated over here on our list of anime for season two and some S tiers now. A couple of A, B, C, and F. So that's where we're at on season two. And we're going to be adding Erased in the next couple of weeks. But I do not go on this anime journey alone. I go with my co-host, Matt Galley. Matt, how are you doing today? Oh, boy. I'm sure ready to talk about more anime dealing with heavy subject matter. <laughs> no, um, I'm doing good. This uh, uh, Welcome back from your trip, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. We were gone last week. Went and saw um, that eclipse. Bro, I saw the eclipse for a while. Me and the eclipse had some friends. And then I came back uh, and I got very sick. And I'm still kind of getting over it. I have a cough. Uh, apparently, people having a bunch of people enclosed in airplanes and stuff, some sickness That'll gets around. It. Who would have thought? So, That'll me, I was it. sick for a while. Uh, so, I appreciate you coming back and not leaving me. But- <laughs> But yeah, uh, I'm super ready to, you know, get into this one. I've heard a, a lot about Erased ever since its uh, release, I feel like. But at its time of release, I guess I was definitely, as we've uh, <clears throat> talked about before, I was more into just the shonen, the action stuff. Yeah. I wasn't really in uh, a mindset to, like, branch out. But I always heard that it was highly regarded. Mm-hmm. So I I went in, like, tentatively. I was like, I don't want to like have like overwhelming expectations so i tried to not really have any but i was still like i was kind of very impressed with where these four episodes uh take us yeah man i want to talk uh a lot about the first episode because i think it does first episodes really well and i kind of want to go into that whenever we talk about it but like overall i had heard and I'm assuming, again, you didn't watch it, like you were saying. I didn't watch it before, but I have heard from a lot of people, this is a highly recommended one. This is a highly recommended anime. For some people, it's a, it's their favorite anime. And I'm like, I don't know. I It just didn't have, like you were saying, that shonen sort of fighting style thing that I want to watch at the time. And I'm just like, eh, I'll get to it at some point. And I'm glad we're doing it here on the podcast because now I get to talk about it and talk about what's going on four episodes at a time um and it's turning it's turning out to be one of i don't know i mean i don't want to say too early but these four first four episodes um it's really giving me a nice experience and one of my more favorite anime that we watched uh so far it was definitely at times because it's got that you know mystery thriller murder vibe to it um and it was uh reminding me a lot of psychopaths in some ways that we watched in the first season of our show so uh, I was definitely getting a feeling that this would be uh, one that you'd be super into uh, mm-hmm. based on that. Because I remember you really liking Psycho Pass. I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's also giving because of like what's going on in the way you go back in time and stuff. Some Tokyo Revengers really mm-hmm. like Tokyo Revengers as well because it's kind of like, oh, my God, we're going to the past. A little different in the way they executed here. Um, but same sort of deal. And I really I'm really liking it. So let's get into episode one. Um, if this is your first time watching, we go through the episodes uh, four episodes at a time. Well, maybe next week we're going to do five. No, because it's 12. Never mind, never mind, never mind. 12 episodes, four episodes each week. So we're going to go over the first four episodes of Erased. And we talk about it, discuss it, and we would love for you to watch it along with us. 
If it's an anime you haven't watched before, we would love for you to watch it with us. Uh, it's a way, it's an incentive to uh, get you to check out new anime, possibly see something you may not really, you know, have checked out before. Get without through a it. watch list, just yeah. at a nice, easy pace and not yeah. feel overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, have somebody tell you, have us telling you what to watch whenever you open Crunchyroll and you're like, there's so many things here. Because I, I get that decision paralysis too. Just say, hey, Jules and Matt are watching Erased. Let's watch that. Okay, episode one, flashing before my eyes. What happens in episode one? Satoru Fujinuma is a 29-year-old mangaka finding himself saving a child from being hit by a truck one day while delivering a pizza. Waking later in the hospital to find his co-worker, Adi Katagiri, telling him that she saw the whole thing and that no one else got hurt. Satoru has a strange condition that he calls the revival, allow, allowing him to relive minutes before potential disasters strike. His mother, Sachiko, arrives to help nurse him back to health, asking him if he remembers a disaster from his uh, year in fifth grade. Satoru recalls his older friend, Yuki, being arrested for the kidnapping and murder of several of his classmates. Sachiko invites Adi, um, I'm, I'm Katagiri probably butchering that um category is probably the better way to go for it yeah um to dinner before he takes her home uh later that evening satoru recalls the guilt he felt after the last time he saw one of his classmates kayo hinazuki sachiko grows more suspicious that yuki wasn't the real culprit and the same person has continued to operate to this day her investigation leads to a knife being drove directly into her back Satoru passing the person who did this, then finding his mom and blooding his hands, implicating him as the culprit as Revival activates, sending him 18 years in the past to 1988. Oh, man. As a first episode, I really like it. What a great first Nailed episode. It. It's It sets it up. It gives us enough character development so we kind of understand Fujinuma. He's a little bit older. Um, we get the juxtaposition between him and the high school girl Katagiri and how they kind of view life, how they go through life, how now he's kind of like, nah, here we are, whatever. Oh, my mom. So, okay, whatever. Um, I love you. Like, you can feel the love for his mom, but it is very subdued. And you can feel the love from mom to son, but it's not present forward. And that's what helps make it feel real. And it makes it feel real, right? Because, like, you know that she loves him, but she says some things that are a little like, what are you What are you doing? What are you doing? And that's kind of like what, you know, parents do sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, given the context that we get by the end of the episode, you get a sense. I mean, I got a sense going back and rewatching the first episode again that she is kind of operating with like a sort of guilt where she's like kind of starting to put pieces together herself yeah. and realize like I should have believed what my kid was saying. Mm -hmm. And that's what I felt like was kind of like the big thing, the tragic part of uh, her kind of uh, having to it's, it's what makes this story like work in a way where you feel really bad and you want to see that be resolved, but then it takes it away, giving the audience something to, that they are like clawing after but the narrative is like oh no 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 he's and no 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 <laughs> yeah i definitely want to talk about the mom a little bit because for one you know we get a younger looking mom and i'm like okay of course like you know whatever but this is the first time that i've seen like a younger looking mom and it feels like uh like we said earlier it feels very real but it also feels like she knows what's going on and she knows what she's doing and it even gets more apparent later on in some of the things that she does in the past and i'm like this is a great mom character as you know as we've seen other parent characters that i don't think i've ever seen one parent character that has gotten like super into the light it's always just like kind of a an abstract character in the back for you know some laughs or something yeah. else but yeah as a prominent character now that i know you know yeah i would say episode, she's a main character not a supporting character for sure she is definitely a main character but she also is the mom mm -hmm. of this person and i love the way they're portraying that i love the way that she is portrayed in the way that she has her own character she only she has her own thoughts and she has her own things going on she's she's doing her own thing and she's just kind of here with her son in this episode and it's like okay this is cool like we we have somebody that's autonomous yeah that is not our main character 
but has this special connection to the main character. And I want to see how that plays out. And it does because we go back in the past and we get some more of her. So I really like the mom character, which is really, she, she, <laughs> I love how she shows happens, up unannounced. Yeah. She shows up unannounced and she's just like, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not going to take up space. He's like, I only have one futon. She's like, oh, it's fine. Like, I'll use yeah. your sleeping bag. Oh, sorry. I ended up using your futon, didn't On I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> like yeah. that got a big old laugh out of me. And it's stuff like that that makes her so likable as a character as well and that's what again is like the perfect thing for them to rip away from the story in the present day and then send you back with this huge like you know you you have a you like this character and now you get to go back and see them in the past and you want to see him succeed so you can see this character not have to go through that being the ending of their story Mm -hmm. so i think it's Uh... just like her character is handled very well in this episode to help provide a lot of a context for his motivations as we move forward. Yeah, man. Cause I was so mad. I was really mad. I was like, okay, cool. Mom dope. This is an awesome character. And I was like, I'm ready for her. I, I to felt get developed. I felt that coming. <laughs> the second it was when they sh- cut away to the guy with the, gla- oh, they cut away to the guy with, in the, gl- with the glasses that she was like suspicious of watching them like walk home to make dinner mm-hmm. and i was like oh yeah he's he's Something's gonna do something happening. to somebody yeah <laughs> oh let's talk about um the trope that we get in this one that the main character has something special about them uh oh, sure. and in yeah, yeah. this yeah. one it is called revival so apparently fuji Numa can for some reason, against his control, he has no control of it. It just he just knows that it happens sometimes. He can go back between one and five minutes, and he can possibly help in some way. He said it only well, it ever only comes out when neutral. something bad is about to happen. Yeah, when something bad comes uh, is when something bad's about to happen, and then the only way that he's fixed it is where the highest the best possible way for him to fix it has been that it comes out neutral for everybody and nothing gets escalated or nothing really is good but it gets neutral or it comes out as bad for him um so in the, I, this initial case we see that he gets put in the hospital like yeah nobody else gets hurt yeah and this happens a lot in anime which is where something has the main character be super unique and i really like that i don't know why i just go with it i'm I'm yeah. really okay with it a character has a really hard head for some reason okay i'm yeah. cool with that and i'm an abnormally you know just weird strength in their own way and i'm like okay cool and that helps me characterize the character a little bit more and it helps mm-hmm. me it brings me into their world a little bit more even though it's so outlandish even though yeah. this revival thing just letting you guys know that this happens sometimes. The thing, and... the thing that I think that makes this story so unique about with its like we'll call it the revival, of the power system. The thing that makes this power system interesting is a few things. One of them being, like you said, he has no control over it. But the second thing being that there's like the the condition. It's usually one to five minutes, and our the true story kicks off with that condition being broken. Mm -hmm. where it sends him back 18 years and then it's just like whoa so then we the audience and the protagonist are now kind of like operating at the same pace in terms of like what's going on and so the collection of information feels natural and Mm -hmm. not forced where it's like oh well last time i went back in the past this far blah 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 and mm-hmm. like he just should be knowing those things but it makes sense that he would be so in the dark and not really certain that he's doing things right because him knowing that this happens it happens to me one to five minutes is usually what it is it shows that he's done this a lot and he's had time to analyze what's going on and had time to sort of control how he acts and what's going on and but by that like you're saying the the huge jump of 18 years it's like whoa we are in we are in uncharted waters and you are along with the ride. You, the viewer, are here because this is the first time that's ever happened to me. And now I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I could possibly help my future. But, like, is there a way? Like, we haven't even – he hasn't even thought about, like, how is he going to get back? That's or, it. At the end of the 
uh, for one of the episodes, I was like, he's I, one, one of two things is going to happen. He's going to go to sleep and he's going to wake up in present day or he's going to still be a kid. And if he's still a kid, anything could still happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, because he hasn't even thought about like, well, once I do the thing, once I help uh, Hinazuki, do I instantly go back because I stopped my mother from dying and all this stuff? Or do I have to live my life one more time in this changed timeline? And can I, you know, hopefully possibly make it better, possibly make his life better. I, that's my hope for the end. Um, so we talked about that. We talked, I want to talk about Katagiri as well, because she is an interesting character because she's annoying to me, but it was just enough annoying for me to see the juxtaposition between Fujinumi, Fujinuma, and for me to understand, um, you know, youth, I guess what they're trying to kind of see, but like, it wasn't obnoxiously annoying because her mom or his mom really likes her. He's trying to, you know, she's trying to set him up, says some mom stuff as usual. Yeah. Uh, but then we also find out like his, you know, his uh, moral compass, I guess, because he's like, yo, she's a high schooler. What are you doing? You're stupid. So I'm like, okay, cool. We got a good main yeah. character. We got a we good have one. that set in stone. <laughs> yeah. We have a we have a good main character here. All right, dope. He's drawing the line. Good job. I know that's really bare minimum. You're already going home. Why don't you spend the night? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking school. about? Bro, no. Um, so we have Hinazuki as well, who is the one that was abducted in the past. And we just get a glimpse about what's going on. Yuki, who was his friend, who was an older person at the time, was the one that took the fall for it. He never um admitted to it he always was denying it or what i guess what's the word uh he always didn't plead guilty he never pled guilty to it always and innocent. yeah yeah and we get the view of somebody with red eyes which was very prominent with a yeah, hat i'm glad you mentioned that yeah. in episode two we're gonna mention a little literally, bit too literally muzan kibutsuji walks out <laughs> with the, the whole nice suit and hat <laughs> uh -huh. excuse me sir and the red he, eyes the red eyes just... stuck out to me and from that point i was looking for those eyes for and the rest of this view mm, yeah mm, yeah yep pain so um mother's dead and, and i think really uh fujinuma's reaction to all of it was what really, really yeah, yeah. set himself apart like he kind of incriminated himself the way that he was acting but it's whatever i mean yeah. you're in shock so i can't say and much I think, about and it. before he ran away i'm pretty sure the butterfly had already shown up so no matter what he did the revival had already like kind of mm. been triggered technically okay i gotcha. think i'm pretty sure it showed up and then they were like wait don't run away and then he takes off Mm. if i'm remembering correctly but uh but yeah he he it doesn't help that he walks into uh a pretty obvious crime scene and touches a dead body covered in blood mm -hmm. for the next person. And then the neighbor covered in blood. Yeah. And then the and... cops are just like there. That was yeah. the thing where I'm like, wait, were they just holding? <laughs> Did that guy like st stab her in the back and then dial 911? Hey, yeah. Right. Stabbing over here. You guys got to get over here. <laughs> Because like, they were the there heck, instantly. Man? He's like, yeah. what are you doing? And he's like, oh my god, wait, hold on. What's happening <laughs> Unless here? Unless that person then called the cops and he just stood there in shock for like 20 Five, minutes? Yeah, yeah. Five to ten minutes? I don't know. I don't know how response <laughs> times look there. Anyways, very funny to me that that was the case. <laughs> mm -hmm. And great first episode. I mean, this gives me enough. This sets up the premise really well. This gives me some characters that I really like. Mm -hmm. And as a first episode, probably one of the better ones that we've seen, I, I really wanted to watch more. It got mm -hmm. me to, to think about what's going to happen. It gave me enough information about what could possibly be going on. Gave us a decent main character that has some likable qualities. Um, and then now we get to see him as a kid and go through life and try and solve this murder, abduction, Oh yeah, the other something. thing I do re uh, totally like the cinematography of this first oh, episode. The so way good. it goes from like full screen to the to the letterbox shot mm -hmm. that was crazy. That the was animation. <laughs> animation is really good. Like in this shot right here, it looks fantastic. What the hell? This looks so good. Cinematography so good in this anime so far, and I really like it. So 
episode one, great, great first episode. Mm-hmm. Episode two, palm of the hand. What happens in episode two? Satoru accommodates himself by running home and falling asleep in his childhood bedroom until his mom returns home from work. Then appreciating the time he has with her due to the events of the present, Satoru realizes Hinazuki's presence with his friends beginning to tease him over uh, over her. Getting a moment alone with Hinazuki, Satoru realizes that more is going on under the surface with her. Kenya, one of Satoru's childhood friends, tells uh, the rest of the friends to chill on mocking him about Hinazuki and tells Satoru to go read her log in the student compendium, which he goes on to do. Satoru knows where to find her and goes to look for her in the park where she acknowledges that they are both liars and put on shows. Satoru Satoru invites her to his birthday party before he declares that he won't let her be he won't let her be left alone in the park in this timeline. It's not going to happen again. We get an intro in this one. We get the intro. This the intro song. It was really song good. I didn't skip it once. Slaps. It no, was really it didn't. good. Yeah. No, we didn't skip it cuz I was like I want to hear the song again and I was like yeah. just jamming. Intro song is cool. I love um, in the intro animation the just the kids being kids, and I think they do kids really well. Like I think the opening animation stuff really shows like just them being carefree, being kids, and I really like that. I mean, we see in the opening shot it's him as an older person, then him as a little kid just bouncing around and doing stuff. Love the animation in the actual intro, and the song is a banger. So A plus on you know, the intro song and, and all that. And I, ha- it was a not skip. Do not skip Do not the skip. intro. Um, revivaled, revived to 18 years ago. And a lot of this stuff, a lot of the, the stuff with his mom um, was sort of like bringing stuff up in myself. Like, I don't know why. It felt like super, I felt like really attached to him now getting a second chance with his mom and him yeah. knowing that man she you know i let this step slip by like there really were some good times and i don't remember that and i don't see that and i just it, it all got clouded by other stuff yep but man she really does love me you know she's making me food and she's making sure i'm good and like i was like man and i started thinking about it i was like man there are a lot of times where um I'm tr- I was trying to think of like the good times for me. I was like, man, there were a lot of good times where people were just caring about me. And I was started like being nostalgic and, and reminiscing about like my, my childhood. Yeah. And it was really cool. Um, because when he walks home and he opens up the, the door to his childhood home that he probably hasn't been at since he like moved out mm-hmm. in the present day. And it's like, it's, it's his childhood home. It's not like he's walking back to somewhere where everything's moved around. He's stepped back in time and is like present there um so yeah that that uh the that nostalgic feeling that it uh stirs up is uh i think definitely intentional because like i picture myself like if i were to go back to my child like try to picture myself going back as in his situation going back as a kid opening up the door the smells and how he looks at his little mask there and it's like oh that's probably his toy that he really liked or yeah you know he, he really asked for at the mall or something and i'm like man like if i walked in and i saw all my power rangers on the on the wall and you know going back to my childhood home i'm like man that's crazy like i just feel a lot of emotion so i'm like i'm there with him and i'm really i feel really connected for some reason um to uh fujinuma just because mm. i don't know it's just it was just really cool and it was really well played I, I really like that stuff yeah and i like the moment of like when he's like saying that like you know i, I forget what he says that triggers it but uh they're still at the table and then sh- her response is like you don't have to cry over it like and he doesn't even realize there's just tears pouring down his face yeah he's like, oh yeah you're right and I think it's Ugh. at the moment that it's the moment that he realizes that like he has to do something to save her. Mm-hmm. Like he's not going to let the rea- the reality he was in become the true reality. And he's like thanking her for every meal. And like she even she notices that, like there's a difference here. Like what's going on? What what are you doing? Um, but he's just being a little bit better of a kid. And uh, as 
uh what's his name yuki notates later he's like oh you seem a little bit more mature like what's going on with you you've changed you seem to have changed um so we get the scene we get some more hinazuki into the fold we actually see who hinazuki is we get some more interaction between our main character and hinazuki and when that actually happens she says you and i are both fakes uh fakes you and i both fakes. are sort of putting on a show um for people and it was really interesting and where that goes we'll talk about that when it happens but one big thing that did happen that kind of threw me and i was like in um when we get a close-up of kenya who is one of his friends mm -hmm. and we get a close-up of kenya and i notated here that he has red eyes so this is the yep. first character that we see after we see the person with the red eyes with the hat kill his mother. It's the first time we see a character that has red eyes. So I'm instantly like, yep. oh my God, what is this about? What's going on? So did, that, did you catch that? I, I did catch that. But also at this point, we've had the introduction of their teacher. Mm -hmm. Who also like, I don't know if he had red, red eyes, but his like demeanor and the way that he's always cast in shadows like he's always in a half shadow so you're getting some vibes off the teacher too i think the teacher's uh, giving was giving vibes. i wasn't getting any vibes from him no the teacher's giving it's it, it's again it's like it's he could be a red herring he could be the intentional red herring that me and her are both catching on to but i think that they want us to like they're trying to make him be that like you know on the surface he just totally what was it what was it in the uh the the, the Kiznaiver that we just watched the the something normal guy you know what I mean like he's that thin. okay he's the he's trying to put off that everything's just yeah. all fine but he's also he's he's got nefarious things going on and the <laughs> fact were... the fact that he keeps uh there's like a breakaway I don't know if it's this or next episode I think it's next episode but I'm gonna mention it now the breakaway where it like shows the teacher in a room talking to a student who's we only get to see their back and i'm pretty sure it's kenya mm -hmm. because in uh yeah i'm getting way too far but, ahead of myself no, i'm sorry but that, <laughs> I, okay so but i thought that was them getting the uh birthday party set up so i thought he had an alibi he was talking to kenya because yes, yeah i know it was just, like it's just such it's just weird vibes that i okay. feel like there's more okay. going on underneath the surface with them yeah because at the at the end of episode four they're like oh my god how did y'all set this up it's like oh well the teacher put these two characters uh to go do that duty so that we can have time to do that so i thought that's yeah. what it was but there are definitely some spots where he is and Kalen does say there were deaf weird vibes from him weird i wasn't really vibes. getting it i was getting it more um obviously from the mom and stuff but i yeah. I, I don't know i i feel like i want to hope that the teacher has good intentions because of some stuff that happens in a yeah episode i, coming I up. want to hope that he turns out to be like the uh the server is snape character you know sure for the whole time he's just given off this like even though it because uh even though in this story, this character is giving off a much more positive energy, like I just feel that something's going on underneath underneath the surface with him that um that we're not getting to see the whole part of. Sure, and, and like it could be, but you know that like what the thing that is mind boggling about that is uh yeah they introduce all these characters that could be potential culprits and i'm just like <laughs> i'm waiting for it to be like oh it's all of them <laughs> now i have to hate all these characters yeah <laughs> like it's actually some uh well, conspiracy that they're all hooked up with yeah the main thing that i you know i saw kenya with the red eyes and there are some lingering shots of him as well yep. like there are some lingering shots where he's just looking at fujinuma and it's just like and even mm -hmm. Fuji uh, Fujinuma acknowledges that like he was always the smart one. Yeah. And just like in another show about kids surviving deadly situations, uh, The Promised Neverland, Ray was the double agent from the start. Yeah. And he was the smart one. Mm. So I'm just saying the the Ray vibes are there where it's like, dude, you're you're putting up a front. You're you're the <laughs> double agent. Ray vibes. You're yeah. the double agent. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're still, yeah. Kenya yeah. does have Ray vibes now that I think now that you brought it. 
Um, definitely. Um, another cool little quirk that I picked up on and I really like about our main character is that whenever he says some stuff out loud, <laughs> when he means to just talk, he's just a fun little character. Yeah. I love when he's just like, when his when he's talking in his inside head voice because it's his older version and then his inside head voice and his kid voice say the same thing at the same time do that 20 Great. million more times i love that i love that shit keep it coming this is the first time where i was like uh oh, that's so funny he's like and oh, everybody it always just yeah has that like did he really just say that reaction yeah the mm -hmm. pause the pause always gets me <laughs> Uh, Bubsy says, "Ugh, erased was a surprise find when it came out. Oh, when did it come out? I don't even know what year it came out. 2016. Okay, it, it still looks great. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Really like it. Um, but yeah, that's one little quirk. Another little quirk that uh, I really like about the main character because he does it a lot going forward as a kid, where his voice, inside voice, is saying the same thing as his kid voice, and he's like, oh my god, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> what did you say? What are you doing? Great little funny thing that happens, um, and I love it every time. Episode um, three. Episode three, yeah. Do you have anything else? Uh, I was just going to say, I also just really like, yeah, going off of that when it's just him and uh, and oh my god, I'm forgetting her name, Hinazuki, Hinazuki. Uh, at the park at the end, and then he says something that, like, makes her smile, and he's, like, just with the full-on, like, <laughs> full-on shock face. It oh my just, god. It is hilarious. Like, the the physical comedy is here, even though... <laughs> <laughs> the physical comedy is here, even though, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a show that makes you laugh and cry, and that's great. Yeah. It's so good. I'm not only crying, even though it is heavy subject matter, and there oh, are a man. lot of tears, but I'm laughing a lot too, and that's yeah. great. There's a good balance. Yeah, man. I uh, I definitely want to talk before we get through episode three. Uh, one overarching thing so far, I love the pacing of this show so far. So we only watch episode one through four, but so far I haven't felt like there's been a lull or it's going too fast. I, f I don't feel like there's any scenes that are not necessary. I really like all the little kids, even though the little kid scenes where they're all hanging out as little kids and they're just talking or whatever and like teasing and all that stuff. Like there's still, I don't, there's still something that's pushing the plot forward in those scenes. Yeah. And I don't feel like it ever loses time with me or even if it's giving me too much information or it's going too fast. I feel like it's just a perfect pacing so far. I feel like it's perfect pacing for the genre specific uh, that it's going for. The, you know, dr dramatic uh, crime thriller like yeah. style. I think it's perfectly paced for that because it's giving us a good flow of information where we're, a we're kind of like being given the pieces of a puzzle to put together this mystery again alongside the protagonist and we're here kind of you know talking about you know the red eyes you know this this and that we're trying to put the pieces on the board so mm -hmm. we can connect all those lines and i'm just curious to see if like at any point before the final revelation if there will be a point where it's like oh i definitely could have connected that and gotten the and i could have answered it and myself. then and like, then it gets you to rewatch it. Yes. And you want to rewatch it again. As long as that connective that. thread is there that like makes me believe that I could have solved the mystery myself at some point, this is going to be like a super satisfying watch for me. Yeah. Um, but if it loses that thread at any point where I'm like, th it's become, you know, a, and that can happen with time travel stuff. But I feel like, you know, this show has the benefit over something like Tokyo Revengers where this one's just going for that. It's going all the way back and then long shotting it all the way through Tokyo Revengers kind of like breaks its time travel segments. And that mm -hmm. makes the, um, that makes the, the canon. I'm trying to think of the proper word, but I'm losing it. Yeah. Uh, it makes it harder to keep things uh, narratively sound when you're doing that. Mm -hmm. And it makes it harder for the audience to keep things mentally like lined up in the timeline and I, yeah and i do like this i feel like this is better and more, more coherent for me just staying in the past here we are we're gonna try and fix this one thing and i really like that um episode three birthmark what happens in episode three uh, a skiing event in the schoolyard leads satoru to have deja vu now worrying his actions aren't actually changing anything 
Hinazuki is able to tell that Satoru gave up in the race and is let down that he lied to her. Satoru discovers that they share a birthday and later meets up with his old friend Yuki. Satoru doesn't believe that the present day Yuki is guilty and wants to save Yuki as well. Later, Satoru finds Hinazuki in a, a shed outside of her house where her mother intimidates her into lying about her physical abuse. Satoru reporting this to his class teacher who explains the mother is good at covering it all up, but things are definitely going on and in process to find her guilty. Uh, Satoru stands up for Hinazuki during a prank on her, then taking her up to the mountain to show off a huge tree with a clear night sky, all stars to see. Uh, and she finally smiles. And we got to look smile. at her. It's so good. So something that I wasn't even thinking about happens in this in this episode for the first time. And this brought my brain to break a little bit because I was like, okay, here we are. He's going to do the race. He says he's going to beat this kid, but he's like, no, I shouldn't beat this kid because this kid practices every day. And I thought it was just him, you know, knowing his body, being the 29-year-old, he knows how to run or, or uh, ski better or whatever. Uh, or uh, what is yeah, it like muscle memory, muscle so memory that yeah, he can sure. ice skate better than this kid. So I thought it was him and it was his new memory of like, oh, maybe I should, you know, let this kid win because I am better now after all this time. But then he gets the flashback. I'm like, wait, what's going on? And it's like, wait, I did this the first time. And I was like, oh, shit. I didn't even think about like him retreading the same stuff because you would think that you would remember a lot of this stuff as a kid, but now, like, me thinking about it more, I was like, okay, he's, you know, what is he, 10 years old now? Do I remember every day of every event of everything that I did when I was a kid? No, and I'm, I am a little bit older than him, but I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, maybe I did some stuff, and I wouldn't remember that was the, the line that I took it. And I was like, fuck, I didn't even think about him possibly – the timeline being st stayed the same because of the decisions that he makes that he thinks are unique to him now, but they were the same decisions that he was making back then. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. So really cool revelation for me as a watcher. I was like, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I didn't even think that he could be traveling down the same timeline. Me either. And not change anything. It's like one of those things where it, it's it's everybody has that mental image of the parallel universe theory or whatever you know is it like a two universes that are operating at a time or is there constantly branching like every universes every time different decisions are made yada 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 um so it definitely pulls into question where where this lies with that because uh he's obviously done a lot of things different since he's come back including having the mind of a 29 year old mm -hmm. but if he's still going to be making the same mistakes that he made 18 years prior how much growth has he actually had in that amount of time how much did those mistakes actually stick with him for him to learn from mm -hmm. um so how much did those mistakes actually matter the ones that he doesn't remember is what i'm saying i guess like, i don't know <laughs> who, who won in the ski race like what doesn't matter but then it's like it matters now more than it probably did then because in this timeline's context he lied to hinazuki saying that he mm -hmm. was going to try his best and go the fastest he could and she knew which he obviously to her gave up on at the very mm -hmm. last second claire says that is a pretty evil looking tree if you ask me the sort of tree you make blood sacrifices to the old gods under very true it looks really pretty though and eldritch yeah i really liked it christmas in uh, the tree pleasant. start move the tree starts moving roll for initiative yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we find out that hinazuki uh hinazuki isn't the only one that goes missing as well we see the pictures of three other girls or two other girls uh from the future that did actually end up going missing and uh Caitlin pointed out that one of the girls was the one that was hanging out with them that the picture was one of the characters that was hanging out with them that didn't go to the birthday party, um, but was another auxiliary character that may have already been abducted. 
because we don't see them at the birthday party unless they weren't just you know super close friends. Um, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I caught seven, that uh, screenshot two seven. Is it one of them? Uh, yes, the one on the far right. Really? I think. Okay. Possibly. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know. notice that. That's a if if that's if that's fact. That's a crazy catch. Those images like blinked by me. Uh huh. <laughs> Um, I really liked it, says Jules, sharpening his knife and smiling lopsidedly at Matt. Oop. Oop. <laughs> I really liked it. Um, but yeah, that there are some other girls that are getting kidnapped uh, eventually, maybe before. We don't know. But our real, you know, change here would be for Inazuki because she is, um, uh, you know, the one that he remembers. Uh, Caitlin said they were at the birthday party. I was saying he didn't have friends at the party when he was a kid. Oh, I thought you meant that when we looked at the picture of the three girls that got abducted, one of the kids was one of his friends. Okay, I re I misinterpreted then. I don't know. Whatever. I'm dumb. <laughs> um, so we have the development of what's been going on. Oh, wait, yes, it was. Oh, well then. So both know. things are true. Both things are true. Both things can be true. Um, we get the development of her mother, who is an evil person, and we get him finding her in the shed. Um, a lot of bruises. Her his mom or her mom being kind of shitty, and it's just hmm. hard to watch. It just sucks. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is very hard to watch because like. What can a kid do yeah. knowing this? And exactly. I mean, even does... him, even him in that situation, like when there's an adult there and he in the body of a child, the mind of a 29 year old, he starts to ball up his fist like this lady's responsible for it. And before he can do anything like she like shoved him to the side like he was a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. She did not even acknowledge his presence. She has no shame over what she's doing no which just makes her that much more i don't know if that makes her more dislikable or not if she were, were to at <sighs> least have some shame over that and like <laughs> i think the most the thing that i hated the most was that she knows to beat her on saturday so that she can fix her face by monday by monday yeah which like, is so oh yeah. that's wild and like so evil really just like pure evil no matter what you're going through in life, I guess, it just really sucks to see, you know, because you know that's happening somewhere. And yeah. that really feels real. And um, it just makes you feel really bad seeing this. Um, but he does what he knows he could do. Oh, before that, uh, talking about his mom or her mom and the boyfriend that was there on the couch. Husband, I doubt it's a husband. Maybe boyfriend. I doubt that's his. He had a red dad. eye. He had red eyes, and she has red eyes too. They all have um, red eyes. So everybody. Oh, that's definitely. I feel like that's just the show's way <clears throat> of like giving you all of these culprits, all of these suspects, and being like, "But who's the real one?" But it's like you know, they could all be red herrings. They could all be in on it. I don't know. The show hasn't given yeah. me enough to put together a solid conclusion. But yeah, so. I definitely, again, the, the pictures are on the board. Mm -hmm. Just need to connect. We're just dots. like <laughs> yeah. connecting the dots here. Yo, what's up, Cosmo? Hello on Twitch. Cosmo, the hair's gone. My hair is all gone. It's all done. We're out of here. Uh, my money is still on Jules being behind it all. Don't look at my eye color. Do not look. Do not perceive. Maybe it was me this whole time. Bum, Hello, Cosmo. Bum. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Um, so the teacher knows, and the teacher does the teacher still give you vibes in here? I feel like he was genuinely trying to help. Like he this knows is about it. Like outside of the classroom when he's talking to uh Satoru here, it's it's not giving the same vibe, but I can't say that he's scot free in my book. Oof. Okay. It's one of those things where it's like, I, I don't know. Like, it's just. Because really, what can a teacher do? He can only do so much. And yeah. if the mom, like, he, to he told him what he was doing. He's like, well, every time we had somebody set go over there, they were gone. Mm -hmm. And we did try to get this done, but she's really good at hiding mm -hmm. it all. 
So I feel like he has good intention. And I don't have any weird vibes from him. Uh, that's me. I don't know, man. That, that's why I don't like his face. Like in, in this scene, no yeah. bad vibes. But I can't say he doesn't wholly not have bad vibes. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, I don't know. I don't on. know, man. I just, uh, everybody is a suspect right now. Uh-huh. Maybe, maybe, maybe if he does, maybe if the cinematographers would have given him some more light in those previous introduction scenes, I wouldn't have thought so negatively about him. Because again, it's like again, lighting is a big thing. Lighting is a is symbolic, yeah, sure. And it's like the the whole half of him in the light, half of him in the dark. I don't know. I don't trust that guy. <laughs> why you need to be in shade? What's yeah. Shade for? I, hiding. I don't feel anything from him, but you know, we'll see. Well, I mean, we'll see, anybody's yeah. a suspect. Everybody's a suspect. I'm getting boop, 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 boop. I'm getting an update from our lady on the floor, my girlfriend here, and she has sent me a picture of the three girls that end up missing. And that's what I was doing right now. <laughs> Thank oh, you so much. Um, so yeah, I think the, the girl, middle? yeah, the right. one in the middle is uh what'd you say, two seven? I think that's the one on the far right. That's I'm the almost same certain. haircut. Yeah, so America. yep, yep. Uh, eventually, Did he forget. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, you, you. Why are you focusing on this one when if you did know this other girl? So, uh, confirmed possibly that they are uh, friends at some point, and she does get abducted at some point. So, I mean, he's forgotten a lot of stuff. <laughs> it, it's been showing that he's forgotten a lot of stuff, uh, which is weird. But they just flashed that on the screen really quick, and I was like. And Kayla was like, isn't that? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what's watching the show. I definitely um, didn't catch it because my eyes were focused on Hinazuki for sure. Sure, definitely. Um, is that the whole stayed... the whole exposition bit that that's it's giving the context to the fact that he's like, oh, she was only 10. Everybody else was 11. So that means she was unalive before her birthday. So I need to find out her birthday in order to know what the like x day is mm -hmm. and then oh it's it's we share the same birthday and that's where he started to fall into the complacency that like oh if she, i get her past x day that means everything will be okay which he does just to wake up the next day mm. which we'll get into right now yeah sure uh kaylin says that's why i think he wasn't as close to the other kids when he was young so the first time around maybe he wasn't as close to all the other ones so he doesn't really remember that having that friend now but you know they're they are getting closer as a group i don't know i hope they do talk about it and i hope that's something that's brought up later um kenya was talking to the teacher as we talked about um already kenya has discussions and at first i was like what's going on but then we he has an alibi there definitely in episode four we uh see that it could be because of this other thing that's happening in episode four um she ends up smiling and we have the elder tree here and it looks beautiful what happens in episode four accomplishment accomplishment what happens satoro asked his mother sachiko for money to take hinozuki on a date then having to ask her mother who denies and accuses both of them of being perverts sachiko steps in just as hinozuki's mother was about to strike her Ooh. While on their date satoru does his best to change his timeline from his deja vu memories he remains steadfast that everything is going to plan with saving Hinazuki. They spend their shared birthday amongst friends where Hinazuki expresses her gratitude to everyone. Satoru takes Hinazuki home where she promises 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 to finish the gift. <laughs> However, the next day at school she would be absent as her promise goes unfulfilled. Oh my god. And I start crying. Dude, Again. when his <laughs> mom, bro, mom is the favorite character. The mom, I'm about to put on the end card here because <laughs> I love the mom so much. Dude. I think that'd be deserved. Uh, yeah. If anything, the mom's going up there because I loved her and I love how she stopped the other mom. Her, oh my God. Such a wild scene that this was going to happen in front of the kid. And she was like, you sure about that? You sure about that? What's going on? <laughs> and it's so good love that she stopped her and she gives her some words and she kind of understands and she and they have this sort of you know conversation like you you kind of know what's going on right and she's like yeah i mean 
what I don't know. I don't know what I can do. You know what I mean? But we're going to try and figure something out. And um, I like that. I like the her development here, even in the past, is fantastic. And I'm really liking her character. Um, he's having some deja vu of how it went the first time, how he met, might have met her, uh, how he went alone and he might have met up with her on accident. Um, and he's, again, scared that he's riding the same timeline. That last time he met her by chance and it's might be going the same way and he's might not actually be making any difference but when his friends show up uh it is timeline changed because now he has this group of friends that are there with him um and she seems fine and she seems good and she has she has some happiness in her uh they have a birthday cake and they have two birthday cakes they have a birthday party for everybody she's invited they have a good time man it's all going so well. I'm yep. like episode four. That's boom. Where I'm just like my my fists were raised at the screen, bro. I was like, boom. I'm ready to fight. <laughs> like you're gonna do something. You're gonna was, you're gonna try to hurt me. Yeah. I was like episode four. We're doing this. We're done early. Oh man, <laughs> this anime is all wrapped up. Fine in a little bow. There we go. Episode four. I know, right? So, right where right when she said that, like everybody, thank you. I'm so grateful. Blah blah blah. I was like. Beep. <laughs> like, and that's the show <laughs> yeah like all right we changed the future we did it everybody survives nothing bad happens um Something's but gotta happen he walked her home she was fine when she when he got home or when she was fine when he dropped her off and he instantly fell asleep when he got home and he didn't pick her up uh from school to take her to school as he normally does he was a little bit late. He was almost tardy, but she wasn't there. And now I assume is where we get into the bigger thing that's going to happen because I feel like now he messed he messed up here, but where does it go from here? Because now if she is kidnapped, if she's under the snow, if she's dead or we don't even know. Um or is she just beaten by her mother? She's just like episode four. This ha, uh, Hinazuki's on the like on the cover on the artwork for the show. Yeah, and I just feel like episode four. Like, hey, if they do it, that that's that's ballsy of you. But I feel like episode four would be p pretty early to take out one of the two cover characters. So it, it does pose a very interesting quandary where it's like, where do we go from here? And I want it to be like some sort of crisis, crisis averted, where it feels compelling and it feels like there's long-standing impact on the story. But yeah, it's just one of those things where I'm very, I'm very interested to see where it's going to go from here. I guess. Does he have to save her for his mother to survive? Because he can even if she is, if he ended up missing his time, he ended up missing it. She's already kidnapped. She's already dead. Is it still possible he has two other chances because they kidnapped two other girls? Mm -hmm. And does he have two other chances to possibly save the other two slash take down the actual person that's doing it and give them up to the police and do all that stuff? So I think necessarily she can be dead and he still have the outcome that he needs to, but sure. it would just suck. Because yeah. I really liked uh I really liked her. Yeah, I really there's I mean there's a lot of me. emphasis on on her with the whole, you know, him the last day he saw her in the park and then the news broke and then he was like I could have just asked her if we wanted to walk home. I could have just asked her and she would have be and she'd be alive. So there's a lot of emphasis on all of that and I feel like he like he said he's he really in my book was doing a lot of things that were like very he was acting with a lot of intent and it was very like compelling to see him try so hard because I think in a way, like it starts off with like, I'm going to save this girl because saving this girl is going to save my mom. Mm -hmm. But somewhere along the way, he's now actually taken to being like Hinazuki's protector. He doesn't want yeah. anything to happen to her. He truly cares about her <clears throat> somewhere along the way that's happened. And 
you know, I don't want to see that <laughs> her have to be removed from, from the story because uh, this show is actually some allegory for fate and that you actually can't change the thing, the way that things are and that everything's set in stone. Because to me, that's what that would mean. Because he's done some pretty drastic things where it's like, every, even all, all, I love the uh, <laughs> the kids all around him. They all say it several times. They're like, dang satoru's ballsy yeah <laughs> they, they keep saying it like you like, know whoa. kids don't usually like have that much you know just like chest and they're just out. holding hands they're just yeah. holding hands or something yeah. i mean sure some do especially in you know whatever uh but it's just it's a. Uh, the narrative is acknowledging it that's what i mean to say that mm -hmm. he is acting completely different from like any like sense of normalcy so for things to just fall directly back into how they were before would be exactly the opposite of the direction I want to see the show going. And I think it would be a disservice to the narrative. And with, <laughs> excuse me, and with how much, uh, how many good things I've heard about this show, I don't think that's the direction it's going to go with her just like, oh, no, she got kidnapped and she's dead again. Mm -hmm. um, but would, here's that, the thing. Suck. <laughs> yeah, that would suck for sure. I think but it's going to be, yeah go ahead no but i definitely am afraid as well that because I, the more i think about it is that like no well no she doesn't actually have to survive for her his mom to die or mom to stay alive but it would be nice if they end up you know him living my my big prediction at the beginning four episodes in only is that somehow he saves her um he never comes back to the future and they end up living their lives together and his mom's alive and he has this whole new life and he sees Katagiri again one time. He's like, oh man, I remember you from the past and here we are. But I have this, you know, Hinazuki now and we are together and, you know, we're going to forge this life and we are, we stay together this whole time. Hmm, that's my hope <laughs> for what happens. There's a lot to go though. So that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, um, Matt, everything's pain. <laughs> when you're not getting uh, revived 18 years into the past, where can everybody find you on the internet? Uh, sometimes uh, I stream on my Twitch. If you want to follow me there, Matt underscore Galley. You could also follow me on my other socials. Just add an ITS at the front. Make it it's Matt underscore Galley. When we're not here getting erased memories and living through deja vu, trying to change timelines, where can the people find you? Uh, you could find me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Jules the Human. If you're seeing, if you're watching on Twitch, I don't stream on Twitch anymore. I stream on YouTube. So on Fridays and sometimes on Sundays, I stream video games on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button for this video because it helps it out. If you want to see all our links, it's in the YouTube description. All the links for that. We have done a ton of anime already. We've done a ton of anime. This is Erased. This is the first time we're watching and talking about Erased. Next Wednesday, we are going to be watching and talking about episode five through eight or whatever it five, is six, five seven, through eight. yeah five six seven eight whatever the next four chunk of erased and we would love for you to watch it along with us watch it talk with us in the chats and we would love for you to uh watch that as well if you haven't watched the anime before if you're re-watching it we would love your thoughts and all that stuff tools when the police come for you where will they find you on my youtube channel youtube.com <laughs> slash jules the human hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed but again i don't stream on twitch anymore if you're watching on twitch um I I I left. I'm yeah. gone. But I you don't can also Twitch anymore either. Let's oh yeah, real. Matt doesn't stream on Twitch. <laughs> I uh, decided. Yeah, I'm 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 in the process of building a new gaming PC. So oh cool. Once that happens, uh, I think streaming on Twitch is gonna is gonna be happening. Kaylin says, "Love the new setup." Yeah, Matt. the the new setup has compelled me to build a PC worthy of the setup. <laughs> nice very cool how many rgbs are you gonna have dude there's gonna be so many rgbs <laughs> uh find us on all the things all the links are in the youtube descriptions um this is where the podcast is you can watch the podcast live on wednesdays on my youtube channel um it gets uploaded on fridays to the youtube channel on the videos tab and on spotify so if you want to watch it on spotify you just look up the jules and matt anime hour as you see right here 
and it is on Spotify. You can watch there as well. So, um, yeah, next week, the next four episodes of Erased, watch those before next week, and we're going to talk about them. We would love for you to hear your thoughts. So, Ooh. see you next time. Bye. Bye.